Hey guys, this is Heer from Twitter, and this is another guitar video about tapping this time. Tapping is using your pick hand fingers to hammer on and pull off the strings. The hammer on part is very obvious. But there's a little trick to the pull off. Don't just lift your finger straight off the string. When you pull off, pull the string up or down before you let it go, so you effectively pluck the string again for a louder sound. And don't tap with your index finger, tap with the middle finger, your third finger and possibly also the pinky. The proportions of the fingers are more convenient for that. You won't need to bend your third finger out of the way of your middle finger like you have to bend your middle finger out of the way of your index finger. So this way is simply a more natural position for your pick hand fingers. Nor do you have to let go of your pick while tapping. That way it's much more convenient to go between tapping and picking. The simplest form of tapping is a two-tone tap. Uh, the tones could be static, or you could move one or both tones around following a melody or a chord progression. If you've heard the Tour song Lady of the Slain, in my solo after the first chorus, just before the second verse, there's this tapping sequence in the solo. That's an example of a simple two-tone tap making a simple melody and a drone according to the scale and the chord. A much more common way to tap would be going between three tones following a chord, possibly including bits of melody, playing two tones with your fret hand and one with your pick hand. Say we are in the key of E minor, a simple tapping pattern would be like this. The index finger of your fret hand goes on the ninth fret of the G string, the E, which is the root of the chord E minor, the fret hand little finger goes on the 12th fret of the G string, which is the third of the chord E minor. And then you tap with your pick hand middle finger on the 14th fret on the G string. That is the B, the fifth of the chord E minor. Then you can play something like this, eighth triplets going up. And here's another variant, eighth triplets going down. Honestly, I don't use this very much in triplets, but this is not completely useless because these variations will be included in a different way in the 16th pattern that I'll get to in a moment. This is just to get you into the basic idea. Then there's a pattern in 16ths, much more common. You can hear this pattern in the chorus of the Lay of Thrym, for example. Now, playing 16ths with the two triplet patterns I showed you earlier, alternating between up and down, resulting in a syncopated pattern, and this pattern I use most frequently. I've used this in many songs, for example at the start of our song The Rune from the album How Far to Asgard. As you see, I am playing the melody with the highest tone and adding the other two tones of the chords as they change with the lower tones. Then there's a different pattern that I like. The double high hit goes like this. If you take a look at my video on the solo in Fire and Flame, you'll see an example of how I use that pattern. You should be aware of inversions at this point. What I just showed you in the basic pattern in E minor was all in the bass position of E minor. The E minor chord is a triad consisting of three tones, so there is the bass position and two inversions. The first inversion would be like this, the E, the root goes on top, and the third is in the bottom. And the second inversion would be with the third on top and the fifth in the bottom, like so. 
The point of the inversions is to have to move as few tones as possible, as short a distance as possible, while still following the chord progression. Let's make a simple chord progression. E minor, C, D, G, C, A minor, B7, and B7 again. Here's how I would follow those chords in tapping using the inversions so I don't have to keep the root note in the bottom and so avoiding moving the entire tapping triad around with the chords. Hey, maybe there's a cool name for a band, the entire tapping triad. Anyway. So as you see, there are different patterns you can use and different inversions depending on how your chord progression is put together. I hope you can use this information in your own songwriting and your solo playing. If you have any questions about tapping, please put them in the comments below and I will answer as best I can. The first link below this video is a link to a guitar profile with all the examples of tapping you've seen in this video. Feel free to download it and take a closer look at the tapping. If you're not used to tapping, be warned that you should start slowly because even with advanced guitar players, practicing tapping causes blisters on your pickhand fingers. So don't overdo it, even though it's fun. Don't practice for as long as you would other things. Rather, practice regularly, best daily, but not too long at a time. That's all for this time. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. They are, among others, Benny Olson, Tilmo, Tiffany Lee, Michael Lewandowski, Megan Badger, Kevin Krentkowski, Juan Gonzalez, Graham Peebles, Dean Belmoff, and Antoine Mkhitaryan. And finally, I would like to ask those who haven't already, please take a quick look at patreon.com slash and see if you can help me bring you more YouTube material. Thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time. Thank you.